Hello everybody, welcome to Renderbots. Uh, today we're going to be looking at text inside of Cinema 4D. So let's not waste any more time and let's take a look. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do this time, I didn't do before, was go and put Cinema 4D into full screen mode. Now there's two little arrows, top right hand corner. Uh, just give that a click and there you go, perfect. So we get to see everything that we're going to play with here today. Right, so text. Um, right, so as you see, when we go to the primitives, uh, text isn't in here. We've got uh, cubes again, as I said before. A lot more in there. So where do we get the text from? We think it's kind of a primitive, but it's not. It's actually inside uh, this thing called MoGraph. And for anybody who knows Cinema 4D, um, well, there's lots of fun things here inside of MoGraph. Um, but today we're going to look at something called uh, MoText. And there's loads of things we can do with this. So let's uh, just give it a click. And as you see straight away, we can see that it gives us a default um, word, just text. There it is. We'll see in sort of our object uh, area here, it's got the word mo text, which again, I can double click on and rename. So let's just name that uh, render bots. There you go. Press enter. And as you see, that's done that nicely. And as you see, it's not changed the text. And the reason for that is because if we look down here, uh, the attributes tell us that this is the word we need to change right inside of here. So it's got the word text. So let's give it a click, press delete, and we're going to type in uh, render bots inside there. Now, if you press enter, you'll see that um, it keeps thinking you want to type some more. So what you want to do is kind of click back inside of our window here, our 3D window here. So give it a click. And as you see, it's changed it straight away. Now, we need to do some sort of uh, moving around with this. Uh, we could use we could use move the camera around, which is nice and easy, um, or we could use the uh, the axis tool here. Now, remember last time we spoke, uh, this is kind of our 3D compass. The X is across the bottom, uh, the Y up and down, and again as before, um, this is the Z axis backwards and forwards. So we press Command Z, and that just undoes everything from there. Perfect. So what I'm going to do is going to use the rotate tool, click in and hold in, and I'm going to get somewhere near, and then move that kind of movement tool here. Perfect. Okay, let's now bring our camera backwards from there. There we go. So now we've got render bots kind of there where we want it to be. Perfect. Okay, and as you see, we can we can go all the way around this. It's nice and simple. No problems inside here. Um, now let's look inside that palette because this is uh, really interesting inside of the render bots um, Motex here. We've got the font. Um, let's click on the font. We'll give it a second, depending on how many fonts you've got in your library. It takes a few moments to load up. I always like this one called Impact. It's nice and bold. Now you see the minute I click on it, it gives me a really nice kind of um, a font there. It's really, really clear and really uh, crisp. And then obviously, you know, you can scroll through these nice and simply. There's a great website called uh, dafont.com and you can download some really great fonts there. They're all free and work on PC and Mac as well. Uh, so that's a good little tip for you, dafont.com. Okay, so I just picked on something called uh, Futura here. Okay, and actually there's somebody who asked me about doing something to do with text. So what I'll do, I'll change this to um, Spartans. Uh, let's just go there. There we go. So I'm going to click on here. Spartans F dot C. There we go. And again, it's not changed because I've not clicked on it over here yet into the window. So give it a click and then boom, there we go. Uh, there you go, Spartans. There you go. Marvellous. Again, we can rotate around this. Just have a little look. All right, now um, let's click on here. So you see that again, when you click on the text, this is all going to light up inside here. And we've got loads of things inside here. You've got depth. So the more I kind of hold on the depth, you'll see that it's actually growing the kind of the uh, the background there. There you go. So you can hold that, giving it a lot of depth in that. So giving it some quite nice punchy look to the whole thing. Uh, the height. Again, it's more about the actual sort of font size, really. Okay. Horizontal spacing. So you can bring the words really, really close together. Really, really far apart as well. Let's just click back on there. There we go. <clears throat> right, okay. Something I find quite interesting inside here is the word uh, caps here. 
And the caps is all about kind of the edge of the text. So if you go really close here, again, using my little uh, window up here to move this camera around so you can see. You'll see start cap, it's got the word cap. You've got the word fillet, okay, and then the word fillet cap. And what this does, if you can see the edge of this, this is fantastic. It really gives your font a really nice, cool kind of bevel edge. See that inside there? Really quite nice. And that's the fillet cap. And it says here it's at the start. So if I look at the back here, so I'm going to go around the back, we'll see that's what it looked like before. There was kind of no edge. So what I'm going to do is on the word end here is go fillet cap and then go, uh, there we go, click on there. And then you see that coming straight to fruition there. Right, so we've got that back to where we want to do. Perfect. Right now, so we've got the word Spartans inside there. Now, we want to put this like on some sort of floor or have something down here for kind of this to reflect into. So what I'm going to do is go ahead to my primitive state there, go to the word plane, and that drops this plane in here. And as you can see, I can move it this way and across, as we said many times before. But what I'm going to do is head for this little, you see this little square here. If I click on the square and drag, we see it starts to extend the length of that. So I'm going to drag that little square, right? move the arrow across. Again, drag this out. And then over here, if we look at the top, look, we've got this other little square here. This will let me extend it. So again, just leave these little tracker squares inside here. That's giving me some really nice floor for me to uh, have this reflect into. So I'm going to hit my render button here. Now, yeah, it just renders that out. Um, nothing fantastical at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a material for this to kind of reflect into. So I don't know if you remember from the first session we had uh, around getting started on this. But I'm going to go down to my uh, little material palette here. Go to Create, New Material. This gives me this nice sort of um, beigey uh, ball here. Give this a double click. It opens up here. And what you do now is obviously pick a color. So the color is the first thing that's highlighted here. So if we give this a click here. I'm going to drag my pointer down here. Click on OK. Automatically tool turns the ball to black. Uh, give it some reflection. Draw the reflection down. So we've got kind of like a very reflective black orb there. OK, so we move the reflection down here. Uh, close Material Inspector. And quite simply drag this directly onto the floor. Now when I hit um, Render, perfect. There you go. We've got a nice mirrored floor for it to kind of bounce off. So there you go, really, really simple. Adding a floor there and bring it down inside there. Um, let's just add a, a material to here just to make this a bit more fun. So create new material, double click on there. Uh, let's click on the, the color window here. So let's go to color first, click on the color window here. Go for this kind of like uh, goldy yellow there, press OK. Uh, again, go to reflection. It's kind of like a shiny gold, there we go. Just something a bit of fun. And just simply grab that gold, drop it onto the Spartans like that. Whoops. Command Z, that brings it back. So it's a danger of doing that is dragging this on here. What you really should be doing is kind of coming over here to the word render bots and clicking on there and dropping it on there. In fact, on there, let's double click that and just name that Spartans FC. There we go. Much better. There we go. So let's hit render now. Magic, there we go. Got that in there. Okay, so what we're going to do now is now look at um, adding this camera. So I've told you about having this camera. This is kind of my pers perspective camera. This is helping me maneuver around this object. But actually what I need to do is actually bring in a camera that I need to animate with, right? Nice and simple. So I'm going to go with this camera here and give it a click. And straight away, we see this bounding box around here. This represents the camera I'll be using. So you see the word camera there. So what I'm going to do is tell this viewport that I want to be, I want to use this particular camera here. And the way I do that is, is go to the word cameras here, give it a click, go to navigation. Uh, here we go. I go to use camera and click on the word camera. And what we kind of just done there, guys, is we've just gone through the lens of this camera. We're actually looking through the lens of it. So now as I pull backwards and forwards now, I'm not using kind of the one I was using to edit with. I'm actually using the, um, the physical camera to now animate with. So it's going to have a lot of fun with this. So bear with me. I'll show you what I mean. So what we're going to do is we're going to look down here at animation window. OK, um, as you see, it says 90 frames here. So this is 90 frames of animation. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put in a, a key here. Okay. So I press the key down. This puts a little keyframe inside there. And what it's saying is at the moment the camera is quite a distance away from the object. Now if I move my playhead all the way to the end here, okay, bring my my camera closer to the object. Let's go real close like this. And then just hit the keyframe once more. Okay, now when I hit rewind and press play, the camera now moves inside of there. Okay, so there's our first bit of animation uh, done right here in cinema. Cool, huh? So what we do is hit rewind. And now we're going to look at actually rendering this and pushing it out as a little film. Now the way I'm going to do that is go to something called this kind of uh, render uh, settings button here. Give it a click. It brings up our, our render window. And what we want to do here is tell this renderer what we want to do with this picture. Because now it's not just a simple picture, it's actually a video. So it says here preset is 800 by 600. So what I'm going to do is click on there. And I want to make this a film. So again, this is completely new, guys. So don't worry, there's lots of settings here. We're not going to be put off by it. We're going to hit the little arrow here. We're going to film and video. And we go down here to something called HDTV 720, 25 frames a second. And this is the one I'm kind of aiming for here. So I like to do this in 720. It looks really good. Give it a click. And what it's done is it's now give us the kind of resolution for a cinema display, if you like. But at the moment it says uh, it's only actually going to record um, a kind of film, if you like, uh, by the current frame, which is just one, like one frame. So I need to tell it here under the word frame range to actually go to all frames. And as you see now, it says frame zero to 90, which is perfect. That's exactly what I want to do with it. I want it to record all 90 frames from right back there, right up close against it. I want to hit the save button. We can see that it's asking me where do I want to save this file to. So normally I'm going to click on here. Uh, I'm going to click on the word, um, let's click this arrow here and let's go to the word uh, desktop. And I'll call this uh, Spartans video. Okay. And as you can see, I chose the word desktop to save this object into. And let's go press save. So all we do is hit this little button there typed in what I want, and as you see now, it has a, as a location to save this video. Now it says the word format. Uh, do we save it in TIFF, PSD layers? PSD, Photoshop, uh, we don't want that. We can give this a click, okay, and as we come all the way down here, uh, I'm going to choose a QuickTime Movie, because again, with this, we're going to be able to drop this inside of Final Cut or iMovie. Okay, so it says fantastic, we've done that. We've changed the format to QuickTime Movie, which is exactly what we want. I'm going to choose the word options now. You see it's set to animation. Um, I want to change this down to H.264. So this is a compression um, and it you know, gives me some good results. So I like to kind of use this a lot. Um, I'm going to ignore everything else inside here and just press OK. So that's, a, <laughs> that's quite a lot done. Um, don't worry too much. Uh, I almost do this automatically now when I'm going to render anything out. So I've just set all that up now to basically push the video to the word Spartans video that's on the desktop. I changed the format to QuickTime. I went to options and changed it from animation to H.264. What I'm going to do now is just close that window down. It seems weird, but I'm going to actually just close that window down. And what I'm going to do now is just press this render button now. Okay, uh, this one here, sorry, this one here. This render to picture viewer. And what that's going to do now is render that whole sequence out. So let's give that a press. And you'll see now that it's actually recording and creating that video live. So depending on what's going on with your uh, camera and what the scene is like, and if you've got many reflections and things in there, you see it's now going through and recording each frame. This can obviously take a long, some films can take an hour just to render one frame. We've got 90 frames here and it's doing it in record time. Um, you know, just seconds to do each one. So we'll just quickly let that finish. Okay, there you go, it's finished the rendering. So I'm just gonna press the minimize button here. I'm gonna to go to my desktop up here and I'm gonna just go to, uh, let's, uh, let's go to our finder here. 
Inside Finder, go to the word desktop, and here we can see straight away the word Spartans video. Um, and you see it's 7.4 megabytes, really small file. Uh, I'll give you that double click. And this is kind of my renders video. There we go. Just press the play button. Boosh. There you go. So um, that was a very, very quick look at creating some text, uh, adding a camera, adding a little uh, bevel uh, to the actual text. Let's go a quick look back on the scene here. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm trying to keep this, these tutorials down to 10 minutes so you guys can just spend 10 minutes having a quick look and going inside there. As always, I'd like to hear your feedback. I've had some great stuff already. Thank you so much for that. Um, people have been emailing me, which has been really good. Um, follow me on render underscore bots on Twitter and then um, obviously comment on the YouTube channel. That's That'd be great. Thank you very much. And um, I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.